Hi, this is Richard Peterson of the California Film Institute. And we're, uh, we have a discussion session that is following La Loran, I'm sorry, La Lorona, which is a film in our For Your Consideration series, uh, which is the, the films uh, are, that have been submitted to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for consideration for the Academy Award. And as part of this series, we are including La Llorona from Guatemala, and we're very pleased to have the director of the film, uh, and uh, uh, it's Hiro Bustamante. Please welcome him. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so very much. much for being with us. Thank you. I'm very happy to share that time with you and uh, talk about movies. And, and thank you to have that space and, and give us, uh, you know, for us it's so important because we have a lot of problems to distribute my, our work in Latin America. So, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's a, well, it's a very interesting film uh, in that it is, I guess, considered in some ways a genre film but it is also a political film. And I was wondering how you sort of, what your mental process was in putting it together. Why did you make a horror film uh, on the well, subject? You know, it was a kind of um, a strategical decision. I wanted to talk about what happened in Guatemala, about the genocide and indigenous people suffer here and uh, what, what happened with the general who was responsible about the genocide and he was declared guilty and after that he was just be put in, in freedom. So, but the genocide is a very complicated topic here because it's a kind of a taboo and people don't want to talk about that and people want to silence people who are talking about that. So I decide to to make a film to, to, in, a, in a way to hide the message in a very appealing uh, package. And so I made a, an, uh, a research to understand what kind of film people, local audience are watching more. And in Guatemala, more than 90% of the people are watching horror films and superhero films. <laughs> and, and La Llorona is a kind of a superhero for us. And at the same time, she has all the elements coming from horror. And, and to me, it was a very, at that moment, seems to me a very good idea because talk about a genocide who to me can be the, more, the worst horror in the world. Uh, using horror language was a, 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 a perfect match. Well, it's, I, I think it's, it's very nicely balanced in the film and it's not done in a way where we feel the, uh, the political idea is exploited. You know, it's taken very seriously. And uh, I, I, again, your performance are very good. And uh, so I think it, it is a, a, a really, really attractive. I notice in, in the US it's a, a was acquired by Shudder, which is a, a horror film. Exactly. Is that, uh, was it commissioned at all or was it, they bought it as after you finished? No, they were when I was finished the film and, and it was very nice because when they called us to propose us to work with the, with the film, uh, I really didn't know Shudder at the beginning because we don't have Shudder in Central America. and. And I, and I asked them to present themselves and they told me we are a platform to showing the darkness about the humanity. And I really love that. And I said, I want to work with you. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I'm very happy because they are really, really taking care of the film. And they are understanding that I, want, I was looking for because as you say, the film was, we, we work the film using a kind of a balance with three he heads, you know, with three baskets. And we were putting in a basket a touch of horror, in another basket a touch of political and reality, and in the other one, folklore and magical realism. And yeah. we never, we were very careful about the fact that never have one of the baskets 
being more high up than the other. And, and, and I, we, we, we wasn't looking for a, a, a pure horror film. Uh, we, we wanted to mix genre. I really like that kind of mixes. And, uh, and I think horror films are so special to permit us to talk about things that are complicated to abort. Yes, and I, I think there, there is some history behind that of using the genre to talk about issues that are, are uncomfortable uh, in themselves. And, and in a way, we had the opportunity to, to rewrite the myth of La Llorona and the legend. Because, you know, in, in Mesoamerica, we really love La Llorona. It's a kind of a divinity. And, and in Latin America too, in the whole Latin America, but in Mesoamerica, she's so important. And- Probably maybe explain what the legend is. The so, legend is, is the story about an indigenous woman who lived in Latin America when the Spanish came, she fell in love with a man and the man in a moment quit her. And she, she became upset and she killed her kids because that man quit her. So after that, she was punished and she started crying about the, the men and the kids. And, and I never understood why we love that legend if the legend is so misogynistic. If you analyze that, it's a woman crying because a man quit her. So, uh, and a woman killed because a man quit her. So I decided to transform La Llorona and say, maybe La Llorona can cry because a more relevant thing than a man. And maybe she can cry because the suffering of, of a people. So, and at that moment we start working with that kind of love line saying, our land is a motherland who want to stop to pray their disappeared people. So La Llorona became La Llorona that I presented the film. And in another way, Normally, movies present La Llorona all the time as a monster. Uh, and the legend say that it, she was an indigenous princess. So I wanted to come back to that Llorona more like a Dracula, you know, more like a princess, Mayan princess, yeah. and, and, and give to La Llorona all that elegance that she has, and, and give to La Llorona all that dignity uh, and make her. Uh, uh, just to see her. Yeah. Well, they, uh, the actress is quite remarkable. I know she was also an Ishkanul, and I think she's on the poster behind you. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's, <laughs> yes. And I have like another coach. Yes. <laughs> and... so, but I, no, she's, uh, but she's amazing because she's just, well, she has wonderful eyes, you know, and they're piercing eyes, and that's a perfect sort of, uh, way to present the character, I believe. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's, um, yeah, she's, she's very magnetic. Uh, and uh, so, I, I, obviously, I'd be interested in you talking about working with her. Is she somebody you discovered as a director? Yeah, uh, you know, I used to live between Guatemala and Paris, and I share my life in, in, in these both cities or countries. And, and when I finished the university and I started working on, on my first feature, I, I was confronted to the question to make my career in France or come to Guatemala to work here. And my partner in my company at that moment, who, and, and in, in this moment too, who is my mother, she told me, you know, you will be more relevant if you, if you come to Guatemala, even if we don't have industry, and even if we ha you have to work harder and you have to fight against the system. So I decided to come here and I, and I discovered a country, as I say, without industry, movie industry. So when I started looking for actors, I wasn't looking for actors, I was looking for talents. And, and I just, my first film is a Mayan film and I, and I came to a Mayan community to make a casting and I, it wasn't a volcano and I wasn't in the market making the casting. 
I rent a, a, a space to, to, to be there and make the casting and I put a, a kind of a poster saying casting mm -hmm. and nobody came. So the other day I changed the poster and I put job offer and the whole village came <laughs> and, and I discovered the actors like that. And, and I discovered Maria Mercedes when she arrived to the cast. And she was so, so shy, you know? And, and discrimination in Guatemala is very hard. And indigenous people are suffering very, very hard discrimination. And I was impressed because normally, because discrimination, indigenous people never watch you at, at the eyes. Um, because they are just doing that. And, and, and my Mercedes was all the time watching me with that eye so piercing. Uh -huh. and, and I say she's perfect for each canoe. And after that, when I started working in La Llorona, I, I decided to call her to, to be La Llorona. And, and she told me, you know, my grandma during the war told me that she learned to cry in silence. And she told me, I wanna cry very hard to be uh, listened by all the world and in, in that film. And to me, it was the, the perfect answer. And I understood that she will be the perfect Verona. Yeah, no, she's very striking looking. And uh, it, is it interesting, I just saying this, I don't think it means anything necessarily, but she reminded me a bit of the, you know, the girl in the ring. Oh, yeah. The Japanese films because of the long hair you know, and hiding her face sometimes. Uh, yeah, you know, Japanese culture and Mayan culture are a lot of things in common. And I know where even there is a Jorona in Japan too, in the, in the Japanese culture, there is a, another woman who, who came and cried at the night. And so we, we, for sure we use a lot of Japanese references in, to, to build a film and and it was so particular because hair became very important in the film. Uh, I wanted to use the hair of my Mercedes Corolla as a water and as a wing. And to, to have all that kind of movement and at the same time use the, the, the hair of the mother and the daughter in, in, uh, in the general family as a card. Cartoon, no, no cartoon, what do you say? You know, like a strike and, and- Caricature, caricature. Exactly. So uh, I, wanna, I wanna play with that and her became very important in the film. Yeah, so is, is the, the general is a fictional general based on real people or is there a particular story there? Yeah, the, 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 the political fact that I present in the film are real and that happens in the recent history. And, but I didn't want to, to inspire my character in Rios Mon, who is the last dictator in Guatemala. I, I prefer to be inspired by the whole dictators in Latin America because they are very similar. And, and once I was, I was making a uh, masterclass in Paris and one of the students in the university asked me, why they are so similar. We can think that they came from the same university. And I say, they did. They made an university who called the School of America in USA. And, and that school formed the most part of the dictators in Latin America. And so they have a, one of that similitudes are, is the fact that they, they continue saying that they are heroes and they save our country. And they continue saying that people who was, was killed deserve to be killed. And, and, they, and they did that to, to save us from communism. And, and I really think that you cannot pretend um, with that role 24 hours. You can do that for some time in, during the day, but for sure at night, you will be feel guilty and you will become human. And in that moment, La Llorona can haunt you. And so I, I decided to put my camera in the house of the, of the general. And because I know very well how victims of the genocide feel, but I was curious about how the responsibles of the general 
filled. And, and so it was that the process. Yes, that, that, uh, uh, fascinating. How many, um, are there many indigenous languages in Guatemala? Well, there is 24, 23 indigenous language in Guatemala. Wow. And, and in the film we spoke to one of the, of the, the languages is Shil, who is, it's very difficult to say who suffered more or less in a genocide, but the Shil etnia was one of the more affected. And so I wanted to use the, the, their language to give us a voice. And I use another Maya language in the film, who is Kachikel. And, and it's because I grew up in the, in the etnia Kachikel, and I wanted to, I'm, I'm just trying to put Kachikel in all my films. And, <laughs> <laughs> and what, was your, the, what, what was your association with the language when you were growing up? I, my, my stepfather is a Kachikel man, uh, and his mother became my grandma. And she was a Kachikel, and and I fell in love with that woman, and she and she learned me Kachikel, and she and she teach me Kachikel, and, and she teach me cook the Mayan cuisine, and she she introduced me to the to the to the Kachikel world, and and it one of my my most appreciated gift that I received in my life. Wow, well, yeah, you know, and you brought it into your work. Uh... Yeah, I mean that obviously it was an inspiration for your first film. For sure. Yeah. For sure. You know, I, I I really when when I when I decided to make movies, I, I decided to make movies to use films as a tool to change societies and to impact societies in a in a positive in a positive way. So I I I start study my, 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 my own society and I discovered that our biggest problematic is discrimination and, and discrimination in Guatemala is because we are not proud about our origins and, and I discovered when, when I fell in love with my grandma after that I discovered that she, she was hiding her origins and uh, she she was speaking in Kachikel only when when the close was when the door was closed, and and I start thinking about all the energy that that people was used to be other thing that they are not, and and I think it was our, our big problem, and and we have to fight against that. Well, and, and it's because that 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 we lived that genocide because. Yeah. And people continue thinking that indigenous people are inferior. Yeah, That's, and you said there are very you know, relatively few movies made in your country, right? They relatively yeah. few films produced. We, you know, during the war, we didn't produce any culture thing or any art thing. So movies was affected about that and. Right now we made four films per year, three films or four per year. Uh, and it's very complicated because we don't have any financial help from the state and we don't have an industry uh, putting uh, money on, yeah. on, on films or culture. So, and, and for that it's, you know, there is positive things and negative things because uh, we don't have a lot of actors, but when I start working, I decide to start forming actors, and we create a kind of um, a, um, a processes to, to work with them and form them and follow them, and not only form people to be part of one film, but form people to to create an all, another career and people to become uh, leaders and icons from the culture part, uh, and it's working well, and I'm very proud of. Oh, good. No, that's good. Uh, the uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I was curious. Like, uh, are what filmmakers have you admired from other countries? So you worked. Obviously, you said you worked in Paris as well as uh, uh, here. Uh, but it, what what filmmakers do you like to see? Oh, I really have a lot of filmmakers that I admire and people who 
uh, thanks to that people I, I could create my universe and, and for sure one of one of the movement that to me was the most important at the beginning was the Neorealismo Italiano. Uh, I, I studied the direction in Paris and, and screenplay in Rome and, and I discovered the Neorealismo and I, and I discovered that we were very close, the Latin people to the Italian people at that period. So, and after that, I, I'm, I continue following a lot of people from the 70s, American filmmakers from the 70s, Lumet, for example, I really love all that he, he made. And Haneke uh, is, is one of the other master, living master. And, and in Latin America is Lucrecia Martel. To me, she, she really revolutioned the, the, the movie industry in our, in our continent. So there's a lot. There is yeah. really. I, I, you know, I, what, one of the, I guess one of the filmmakers I was thinking of while watching your film was Kubrick. You know, oh, some sure. of those scenes where you, you zoom very slowly in or zoom very slowly out. You know, and I think uh, the first shot of the film, which it, you know, which is quite, uh, quite strong, and and also the trial scene, you know, yeah. where I think you, yeah, for sure, The Shining was one of the most important reference for that film, huh. and it, you know, when when I decided to make the film and I decided to put in cl close to the house my characters, yeah. The Shining was for sure the reference. But that decision came because we had a very, very small budget. And, and I was wondering about the fact that how I will be represent the suffering for a whole indigenous community if I have just that small budget. So I said, I will put the camera inside, inside something and I will let, I, and I will let the, the sound make it work. So it was more like that, the idea. And, and, and it's the first time that I start working with my sound designer from the really, really beginning of the script. And, and he came to start working with me with that. And, and, I, and I will never change that, that technique to work. I think sound have to be from the beginning with you. Yeah, so I, I mean, say a few things about the trial scene, which, which is, I think, quite strong. And uh, one of the one of the things that really impressed me were the veils that were worn by yeah. the Indian women. You know, uh, it was inspiring in a, in, a, in the real um, processes that we live in Guatemala, and the women who came to give their um, their stories, they came with that veil, yeah. not the same because I changed it. To, to have more their face. And, and I put that kind of a gold flowers because I wanted to, to, to make a, a, a kind of a divinity of, of her. And, and to me, it was very, very strong because all the people who work in the film, like uh, actors or extras, are people who are defending human rights or uh, they are continue looking for justice and they are continue looking for their the people disparate. And so the, the women who made the, the, the speech in, the, in, the, in that scene, when I started working with her, she, she took the, the, the script and she told me, can I change two lines? Because if I change that two lines, it will be exactly that I lived during the, the war. And, and I was like uh, with a Jorona in my mouth, you know, like, and, and, and she, she, she gave me the rhythm of the scene and she gave me the, the tone of the scene because she was giving me one of the parts of her life. Yeah, wow. That's extraordinary, it's a very powerful scene. Uh, but, uh, well, well, thank you. I, 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 uh, I don't know if there's anything else you'd, you'd like to say um, to our audience. Oh, thank you to watch the film. And it's a, it's a very nice um, opportunity because, you know, when, when we were shooting the film, uh, we had some 
threats and menaces and people don't want to let us shoot the film and even a, a political woman is trying to stop the shooting and and after that when the film be released in Guatemala was released in Guatemala we didn't have any support and people don't want to talk about that and after that we start making the golden gloves and oscar career uh -huh. and right now people are very proud about that so it's the first time that people are proud to talk about that topic so it's very funny but if the glamour of movies can do that it's a magical thing so but, but before before the nominations was it or are the before the the uh, you know the talking about the the, the awards it was was it was it not well received before that? No, you know, in, in Guatemala, if you are somebody who defend human rights, you deserve an insult. And the insult is communist. So you can understand that if in a country that is not very good to defend human rights, a, a genocide can happen. Yes, yes, yeah. It can happen anywhere. Exactly, you're right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Good luck with the film. And again, it's 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 much more than a genre film. And and uh, you know, I I think you are doing some very interesting work. And look forward to seeing more of your productions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.